Hello, my name is Silas Klug and today I'm just going to uh, make a quick video talking about the PrinterBot's new uh, injection mode extruder and how you can install it on your simple as it's primarily designed for the play. But obviously I have it working and I'm going to show you how you would mount it. So the first thing you want to get to do, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is print off the bracket I have in the description below. Uh, it's a, I have a modified version, I took uh, the one printer bot provided and I went through a bunch of revisions and I've decided this is the best way you can mount it onto your simple. Uh, you're likely going to need a drill bit to drill out these holes to make them more accurate as well as, actually these ones almost always come out just fine off the printer. So you're really just going to need uh, a correct drill bit in the size of these holes. So hopefully you have an assortment, otherwise you might just have to pick one up. Oh. Once you've taken your order shooter off, the old aluminum one that you most likely have, uh, the three holes that went into the bottom that attached it to these three holes, uh, you're going to save those screws because that's what you, those are the screws you're going to be using to attach this bracket on. Uh, where do I have my screws? <laughs> there they are. So you're going to have to attach this bracket. At So the first step is you're simply going to, from the beneath here, attach the three screws into this so this bracket starts by staying in place. One thing that also makes this a lot easier is taking this fan shout off. So it just allows it a lot easier to get in here with the Allen wrench and to be able to attach everything and line everything up and obviously it comes off and on easily so you'll just be able to put it on afterwards. So once you have your bracket uh, firmly installed you're going to notice that in the current version, now this may change, but the screws are too tall so they go up and your injection molded extruder pieces would not be able to sit flatly. Now it's kind of important that they do sit flatly because otherwise they won't line up with these holes. So what I did is I simply drilled holes in the back of these, which is not ideal, but I just drilled holes so that they fit over nicely and were able to then sit flat. Uh, the alternative would be you'd, you'd be able to source some screws that are either short enough, so either you would have to find those at a hardware store or... But, as far as I can tell, I don't think these screws are going to have any problem, from what I can tell of how this part is molded and stuff, that's really a non-issue. So, I just took a larger drill bit, obviously hit them up, and then now they'll be able to line up nicely. So these next steps have to be done in a pretty specific order for you to have everything work and for it to line up nicely, so... I'm going to have this camera and you're not going to see me, but I'll try to have it close up so you should be able to see what's happening. So, the first thing I want to do is get my motor, and I want to put that in first. Nope, I just remembered. Silly me. So, I'm going to put my extruder through first. So, I kind of have to have it angled out this way, so it's kind of at an angle, so that I'm able to fit these pieces on. So I'll put these in and I'll screw this together right away. Screw it together nice and tight. Keep your extruder firmly in place. So I have that screwed together. I can drop that down then. And now I want to put the motor through. Let's move this forward a bit. And you have to make sure your cables are facing the right direction or else, and that they're not on top of each other, or else you're going to have a bad time. So, I'm going to push this through. It's going to fit nicely. Everything lines up. You have to make sure that this gear, if, it, if your current setup doesn't have this, uh, if this gear doesn't line up exactly with this hole, you would have to uh, just loosen this uh, set nut and adjust it appropriately. So once I have this in, I can start by tightening these two screws, putting them in. First one. Oh, that's 
about it. Hmm. Oh, here's the second. Got the second one. Put the second one in. So really, this isn't too hard of a switch. Yeah. It's not really too hard of a change. It's not too hard of an upgrade. It's really just taking off what you have currently, printing this bracket piece, cleaning up the bracket so everything fits nicely, and now you can put this one in. This used to be way harder. This is like my ninth version of this bracket piece. I used to have to do so much like sanding and filing and re-drilling to get everything to fit nicely, but it should be able to just be this easy for everybody now. So there you have it. There you have your printer by extruder. Uh, as you can see, we have this little piece in the bracket that's attached on. So you're going to lose maybe, I don't know, a little more than an eighth of an inch. But that's going to hit off on your end stop, your Y end stop. So you don't have to, uh, obviously that's an issue is this motor is now going too far back that it hits off on this aluminum piece. So your end stop wasn't working. So you have to make sure this blue piece, uh, not blue, whatever color you printed in, uh, touches off on the back. Also to note, I have currently printed an ABS. Uh, usually ABS parts just to be a 10, uh, just a slight bit tighter, but you s I would probably ideally print it in like a T-glaze or a PLA that's going to stay cooler. I mean, not cooler, but prints cooler and then prints a little more accurately, I find, but obviously with ABS, I just took a little file, I file down on the walls, I clean them up, and then obviously everything fits nice and smoothly. The motor sits pretty firmly against this bracket for everything to line up. So now I'll put back together my fan, put that back on, you're going to have to readjust your Z assembly, readjust your software to calibrate your new Z axis, because this does change the height of your extruder. Your extruder moves up a bit, so you're going to have to move this uh, to compensate, but your Z probe, it's not a big deal. I mean, if following this instructions, you should be able to get this done no more than half an hour, I would say, and you should be right back up in printing. So, I really like this upgrade. Uh, compared to the old one, you had a really short level lever to pull up on. So having this nice lever for filament changes has been super nice, and I'm probably going to keep using it, even if it's not as pretty as nice shiny aluminum. But it works great. I've had no problems. Been using it for about a week now, and I highly recommend it. So, again, I'll have that STL file linked below. And the, this extruder will be available for $19, I believe it is, from PrintoBot. And I highly recommend it, so go check it out. Thanks for watching. My name is Silas, and have a good day.